Costa Rica means rich coast in Spanish. Is it true that Columbus was the one who came up with the name? Your guess is as good as mine. But it is true that Columbus landed his ships near Limon back in the age of exploration. He wrote in his diary that when he landed, the indigenous showered him with gifts of gold. Hence the name. It sounds a little strange to me. There's no way they could find that much gold in Costa Rica. Columbus originally set sail in search of the legendary land of gold. Maybe he was just nuts about the stuff. Costa Rica is rich enough without it. Look at the forests and the animals and the peace-loving people. That is what I want to protect. I know how you feel. Democracy took root in Costa Rica before anywhere else in Central America. Sure, we had coup and dictators and all, but never a total meltdown. That is, until 26 years ago. The Civil War. Yeah. I understand you lost your grandparents. It started with a dispute over alleged fraud in the presidential election. What I do not understand is why friend turned against friend when they could have talked it out instead. Yeah, that... Would have been nice. Even today, some buildings still have bullet holes from the Civil War. A quarter century later, and it is a tragedy we Ticos cannot forget, must not forget. It was the year after the Civil War that the army was constitutionally abolished. A new president was elected this year, President Odeberg. He seems to be distancing himself from the United States. He has limited the privileges granted to American banks, lifted the sanctions on Cuba. Our last president was so pro-U.S., people suspected he was in bed with the CIA. You think the CIA is doing this because it feels threatened by the president's shift in policy? It is possible, but would they really bring in such a huge army just because of that? Part of our job is finding out. Exactly. Thanks, Snake. Peace. So, are you a student at the University for Peace, Paz? No, I am still in high school. But Professor Galvez lets me visit his office and study with him every now and then. International law, security, conflict resolution, human rights. We study all these subjects and then use them to build the foundations of peace. Yeah, I get it. I just never heard the UN had a university for peace before. Oh, that. Well, to be precise, it is still being set up. They have started conducting research, but the UN has not passed the necessary resolution yet. Professor Galvez couldn't wait that long. Oh, right. Costa Rica abolished its army and has also hosted the Central American Court of Justice. It is the perfect place to build a university like ours. Don't you think? Professor Galvez was a KGB spy? I thought he helped me out of genuine concern for Costa Rica's future. You didn't know. How could I? Believe me, Snake. He introduced himself as a peace researcher at the university. He had an office and credentials and everything. They're masters at creating cover personas. They think of everything. ID papers, jobs, sometimes even families. Don't feel bad you didn't see through it. But you did? From the first time we met. I wish you had told me. Sorry. I didn't know if it'd be right. You might have gotten mixed up in things you shouldn't. That is impressive, though. Sizing him up at a single glance. He reeked. Reeked? He had this unmistakable air about him. The air of someone who's been given a mission and will see it through no matter what. Like me. I could just smell it. That's amazing, Snake. <sighs> I'm just kidding. It was his prosthetic hand. Why would a professor from a peace university need a tool for assassination? <gasps> that coffee you guys brought us is pretty damn good. Isn't it? Costa Rican coffee is the best. The Central Basin has all the right conditions for growing coffee. It is high in elevation, with steady temperatures and well-drained volcanic soils. The professor certainly seems attached to it. The coffee we drank on the boat coming over was awful. It put him in such a terrible mood. 
Well, how come I never hear about Costa Rican coffee then? Because it gets bought up by wholesalers and mixed with beans from other countries. It is really a shame. Such wonderful beans and nobody knows they are from Costa Rica. Huh. They should launch an ad campaign or something. Right. I hope one day people will recognize Costa Rican coffee for what it is. I'm with you there. Are there any large-scale ruins in Costa Rica, Paz? There is a place east of Cartago called Guajabu. They have ruins there, but they're not especially big. Hmm. Not the place I'm thinking of. Any others? Well, if you go a little way across the border into Nicaragua, there is a place called La Fortaleza de la Inmaculada Concepción. That is the only famous one. Then what were those ruins I saw from up on Irasu? There are a lot of things we still do not know about Costa Rica's ancient civilizations. There are giant stone spheres throughout the country. What they were used for is still a mystery. Paz, you said Costa Rica has no army, right? Correct. Article 12 of the Constitution declared that the army as a permanent institution is abolished. It does permit us to organize armed forces for national defense based on inter-American treaties. Only temporarily, then. In effect, yes. But in the years since the Constitution took effect, Costa Rica has not once raised an army. Paz, how does your country defend itself without an army? Especially in a rough neighborhood like Central America. With the right kind of diplomacy. If we live up to our ideals and earn the respect of other countries, the international community will support us. The two times Nicaragua actually did invade, the conflict was resolved diplomatically under OAS auspices. Doesn't that leave you depending on the U.S. after all? American influence is unmatched, it is true. San Jose was critical of American policy at the time, but America supported us all the same. It was because we practiced peaceful diplomacy. That is what I like to think. That's one way to approach it, sure. But there are countries out there who will use force no matter how bad it looks. Maybe so. I know my way of thinking probably looks naive to you, but it is not like we expect peace without working for it. Diplomacy is a battle in itself, and we have to make the effort to seek out causes of misfortune and nip them in the bud. It was that kind of thinking that got me trapped in their base. <laughs> I'm not blaming you. You haven't done anything wrong. The army was abolished 25 years ago, the year after the Civil War. I learned about the sorrow of Civil War from a very young age, the futility of countrymen fighting each other, and the tragedy. Costa Rica learned the hard way. That is why it abolished its army. It decided to pour its efforts into education instead. More teachers than soldiers was the slogan. Education is essential, no question. Even Che used to teach reading and writing in between guerrilla campaigns. Costa Rica was poor at the time. We did not have many resources. I suppose we had to pick one or the other. The military or the schools. Kaz was telling me Japan has a peace constitution too. That is right. Apparently when Costa Rica was drafting its constitution, they looked to the Japanese as a model. Only, Japan's constitution renounces war itself. Unlike Costa Rica. But, Japan has a self-defense force, right? That I do not get. I think I will ask Mr. Mueller about it next time I see him. He said he used to be in the JSDF. Huh. You're a curious one, are you? Don't study too hard. What was that you were saying? Peace is not the natural state of men? You said you learned it in school. That is right. They are the words of the German philosopher Immanuel Kant. In 1795, he wrote a book titled Perpetual Peace. Kant argued that it is precisely because peace is unnatural that we have to make it ourselves. How? That is what his book is about. Is the concept starting to sound interesting now? 
Not really. I belong in a more natural world. Is that so? My grandparents died in the Civil War. If only we had been at peace, they would not have lost their lives. You actually wish for war? It's not like I want to hurt innocent civilians. But if someone attacks you, what are you supposed to do? A country needs the strength to defend itself. Otherwise it faces invasion, oppression, political subjugation. If they would simply stop using force to tangle with each other, countries would not need force to defend themselves. And how would you guarantee that? I... Sorry, but you have to understand how the world works in order to protect the ones you love. That's not to say ideals aren't important, too. They are. You are right, Snake. Thanks. Peace.